Hello, baby. Hello, hello, hello. Winter, come here. Give me hugs and kisses. Come here, rub my back. Rub my feet. I love you. Oh, get that for me, will you? Mr. Ashton, hi, hello. Um, no, it's a fine time. What can I do for you? I see. Who did get that? Well, thank you for letting me know. Okay, yes, goodbye. Oh, damn it. <sighs> Hi, Dad. Oh, I'm fine. Well, the Met just called. No, they gave the job to someone else. Some guy out of Columbia. No, the college, Dad. I don't know, his parents must have donated a wing or something. <laughs> you'd do that for me. Well, thanks, but I don't think you'd do very well in prison. <sighs> yeah, no, I just thought I'd call you before I go out. The Beckys. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just, I can't believe this happened again. No, no, we talked about this. Because I don't know if I wanna teach art to teenagers in Menominee Falls. I hated going to that school. I hate teenagers too. No, I don't care if Mr. Glossman is a friend. We're already talking about it, okay? So just don't get involved. I know it's a job. I have a job. Maybe I'm not ready to give up yet. It's not a midlife crisis. Because I'm 35. I don't care if it's the halfway point of my life. Yeah, well, you were married to a bitch. All right, you know what? I'm just, let's, okay, I gotta, I'm gonna go now. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow, bye. Okay. Look, 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 here. Let's go. Look, it's your pole. Winter, freezing. Okay, you've been fed, you went to the bathroom, you're all set. I'm gonna leave your favorite on for you, but I want you to really give this some thought, okay? Because I respect you and your opinion. Hey, what are we gonna do? It won't be a late night tonight, okay? And I promise, Whatever happens, it's you and me, buddy.
be Thursday. Excuse me? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Normally it's a bad joke between me and the customers. Like, oh, you need a bottle of alcohol today of all days? <laughs> it's actually a really good joke. It's just not. Anyway, I, I say it because uh, you've come in here every Thursday for the past couple of months. You bought that exact same bottle and, uh, and oh, it's 11.80. And uh, so, so I just knew it was Thursday. <laughs> I don't, I'm not. Oh, hey, it's store policy not to judge alcoholics. I am not an alcoholic. That's exactly what an alcoholic would say. <laughs> I have the worst sense of humor, right? <laughs> God, I'm terrible. The thing is, if all of our regular alcoholics only came in once a week, <laughs> we'd be out of business. <laughs> okay, you should stop talking. Okay, all right, yeah. So, here you go. So do you like, need a bag or anything, you know? Cool, all right, do your thing. <laughs> I'll see you next week. I don't want you to take offense to this, okay? Would you get off that goddamn crate? Oh, sorry, man. She's just so pretty, dude. And it's Thursday, and so I thought it'd be funny, if, but like, I just couldn't stop talking, so. What? I just can't believe that you're not a virgin. I'm not. I'm not a virgin. Charmaine! What's up? Charmaine knows, right? Tell him. Well, tell him. How much? Oh, please. Just take it on the house as a thank you for your future business. Thank you. Respect. That's what I'm talking about. Respect the crate. Fuck me. Ellie, leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hey, Ellie, where are you? I'm at Becky, so uh, call me or just come over if you want, okay? I need to talk to you. I love you. Bye. Hey, it's... You just buzz me in, for God's sake. Okay, before you come in, no judging. Well, you look terrible. No judging. Okay, okay. I'm gonna okay. leave the door open, but I'm gonna need you to get me to the count of five before you come in, because I have to go back to the bathroom before my insides explode. Oh, God. And whatever you smell, I swear to God, it's nothing compared to the truth of what is happening to me. Okay, should I open the windows? I'm not an amateur, Stacy. The windows are open, and there's candles, or just five seconds, okay? okay sure. Safe. I don't smell anything. Good. <clears throat> That's good. That is the worst part about renting a studio. I have to live with the smells of everything all day, all night. Are you up for this? No. Pour me a glass anyway. Oh, honey, what happened? I'm not sure. I haven't been to a foreign country. I haven't even slept with a foreigner in like a month. I went to a really nice restaurant with clients last night and we got 
some sushi and they brought out this Japanese fusion thing on a bowl of colored ice and I thought, even if this food is dipped in mercury, I am drinking enough to kill off any and all bacteria that might infect me. Well, mercury isn't a bacteria. Everything was fine until I got home and discovered that my intestines had knotted to the point of not letting anything through right there. And then all of a sudden, every piece of food, every drop of liquid on this side of the DMZ of my stomach came shooting out of my mouth like the Japanese attacking Pearl Harbor. Well, the DMZ isn't. And the other end was like little boy. My body's retaliation against every stupid thing I've ever done to it. I didn't think it was possible. But the body remembers, Stacy. It remembers. Now I'm just suffering through the aftershocks which started sometime in the middle of the night last night. I'm gonna tell you something, Stacy. I've been I had to wash my sheets in the bathtub last night, Stacy. Things got so bad, I had to make a quick decision to buy a new mattress. And I was okay with it. God has shown me something. I don't know what you'd call it, but it is powerful and all-knowing and scared the living sham. <laughs> Did you know that we've been drinking every Thursday night for the past two months? I hadn't even thought about it until this cashier said something, and it made me realize how much I look forward to our time together. And I hate this business sometimes. Entertaining clients is like being on an endless first date. You have to be on, like on, on all the time. Have you ever had to entertain clients? I'm a dog walker. And sure, I've slept with clients. Everyone has. You know, if there were more women in a position of power and finance, the banking industry would have a higher percentage of STDs than prostitutes in old folks' homes. Shane, in acquisitions, slept with a guy one night to obtain a commission, and he is not gay. No, he wasn't. Now he's vice president. And he's married to a costume designer and so much happier. They have a farm and chickens. Guess life just happens when your job is performance based. Honestly, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have access to these kinds of accounts, these commissions. I don't know how people live in this city without debasing themselves. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, I say that, but I love it. Like that guy I introduced you to that one time. The one with the cleft. You know, the thing. And I thought it was going to be weird, but it was like the, the best, best head, head I ever, ever got. got. It was. Oh, God, and he was so good looking, too. I can always tell when it's him calling. Oh, Jesus, Becky. No, not because of the sound of his voice, but because I can... Feel it down there. Please, just... What? I miss him. Kind of. That was the biggest end of the year bonus I ever got. I just, he's, he's all I think about when... Stop, okay? I've heard enough about your body for at least a year. Do you want to talk about your body? No! Look, I'm sorry you're not feeling well, okay? I just came over here to complain about some stuff, but you're clearly not in a position to talk about anything other than the terrible things happening to your whole nether region. I'll never eat Japanese food again. Or Indian food. I'll never eat with my hands again. And I will never let a man finger me under the table at an <sighs> Ethiopian restaurant. I am delirious. That has happened before, though. Yeah, I was there. <sighs> he was so cute, but so messy. And, like, I never would have connected yeast with yeast infection, which is, I mean, that's ridiculous, oh, right? Oh, God, oh, God. And he was trying to be so subtle about it, and you I were... was in the throes. It was, yes. Yes. I, I think...
think my eyesight is dimming. Is this what happens in a confessional? I have no idea. Oh my God, I am so sorry. You have been such a great friend and I know that you're not used to this kind of conversation coming from Nebraska. Wisconsin. Well, which is the capital of... Jesus, I think I'm losing my mind. Do I have a fever? No, you don't. In fact, you feel cool. Shit! Well, what's the opposite of a fever? Hypothermia? You don't... <sighs> Why don't you just call tonight off? Because I love you. Oh. Okay, I was going to cancel, but I couldn't find my phone. I mean, I had been on it all night, and then it just disappeared, and I don't have a landline. And how do you find your phone without another phone? I'm dying. I mean, I am dying, right? Yes, you are. <sighs> I'm so sorry. What did you want to talk about? Not that I'm in any mental or physical condition to be able to help you solve any problems that you might be experiencing, but talk to me before there's a round two. <laughs> fat boy. Fat boy. You're dating a fat boy. No, and I meant fat man. The second bomb that they dropped I on. dated a fat boy once. So sweet. Great cook. Soft skin. I never would have guessed that part. The soft skin part, not the great cook part. Wait, are you dating a college student? No, I am not dating a college student. Because that would be so hot. I've found that college students are basically meat puppets. I mean, they repeat things back to you that they've heard in the hopes that at some point it's going to make them sound smarter. They try so hard, but their minds are so incredibly simple. I am not dating a college guy. <gasps> High school. God damn it! I'm not dating anyone. My problem is not boys or men or meat puppets. What is it then? Just forget it, all right? No, come on, talk to me. I'm sorry, I'm hogging all the conversation. I'm here and like sound. I'm here. Talk to me. I don't know. It just... Okay, you know, I moved to the city because I hated living in the same place that I grew up in. The same place I went to college, where I had my first real job. Lost was, your virginity. Yes, okay? Yes. And when I finally realized that all those things that people think are so important, you know, the suburban... Brainwashed. All these major life-changing things actually had the most boring possible outcomes. And I had to get out of there while I was in my 30s, so I decided to move here. Oh, I had such high hopes for this place. I, mean, I really thought it was gonna solve all my problems. And it hasn't. Not really. It's not as bad as home, but it's not this mecca of dreams either. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have winter. I get lonely sometimes, Beck, and I like my job okay, but it is not what I'm supposed to be doing. What did you go to college for? You know what. I know, I just really like hearing you say it. Art history. Art history. I mean, besides romance languages, there's not been a major that has made those intrepid creative writers feel more superior. Yeah, at least it's a master's degree. Well, yeah, and they have higher degrees for writing and languages, too. It's called pre-suicide. Yeah, I know how they feel. Did you know that I've applied to seven different positions at the Met since I've been here? Oh, no. You didn't get it? Nope. I'm sorry. I was just joking before. I've been so sick. Why didn't you tell me? It just happened. God, you know, I spend my Saturdays pouring through every hallway, every piece of artwork, every sculpture. My phone is an entire catalog of every piece they've had on display in the last six months. It is the only place I've ever wanted to work. I know the place like the back of my hand, and I still can't You should get find one of those heads of the department, or whatever you call them, and sleep with him. Really? That's your solution? Or her. I mean, you would do that sort of thing, right? Being like an art major? You know, I wish I had the loose morals of a Long Island trust fund baby who owns her own apartment and 
feels free to do whatever she can to impress her drunk of a father, <gasps> who has two illegitimate children, three ex-wives, and narrowly escaped embezzlement charges from the company he founded. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. You should be sorry. I mean, that man is my idol. <laughs> there, I mean, there's something to be said for being adopted by a megalomaniac. He had a shitty childhood and he said he wanted to adopt an unfortunate. He's always giving and taking. I want a pillow. There are pillows all along this. No, a human pillow. You want me to sit on your face? Only if it comes with a promotion. Mm. I'm sorry you're having stomach problems. I'm sorry you're having a midlife crisis. It's not a, oh, I don't know what it is. I just really thought I would have found myself by now, especially here. I don't think that that's how it works. No? I guess in a sex first, ask questions later kind of world. I think that New York City can inspire anyone. I mean, people come from all over with one thing in mind. They want to be an actor or a musician or a banker. Or a prostitute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the real beauty of this city is that it gives you the opportunity to experience anything and everything and then you can make a decision about who you want to be. I mean, sometimes it happens right away, and sometimes it takes 20 years. I don't think I can wait that long. Well, what's the alternative? Move back home? No. You'd hate L.A. Chicago is a mess. You could move to Detroit, but no one would ever see you again. I would love, love, love to see what you'd look like after living in northern Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so what, a meth addict with seven kids and three teeth left? Mm. But still with a positive outlook on life, like live one day at a time. Oh, could you hold this for me for a moment? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that settles it. You can't leave. The city wouldn't be the same without you. I don't think the city would notice. You have to go in my hour of need. Go. I don't want to go, but if really... Sir needs a lot, sends up a flare, and you come running, I understand. Don't call him that. Oh, please. The only men who get more dick than Ben are politicians who fight against gay rights. I love him, I do, and I know that he's going through something, but if I find out that he's just called you up so that you can go be his wingwoman at some bar, you are both out of the will. I'm in the will? For now. I'm in the will. Is it money or stuff? Oh, just go before I change my mind. Okay, I love you. Call me if you need to go to the hospital.
uh, jeans and a shirt and a jacket? Uh, you probably smell like dog. Where have you been? Becky's. It's Thursday. My darling, if there was ever a guy, gay or otherwise, that was undeserving of a sidekick as devout as you, it would be me. Oh, God, I'm out of the will. <sighs> Becky. No, no, I promise you, your services are not of that type tonight. Thank you for coming. Can I get you a drink? I'll have what you're having. Beautiful. I was gonna open this lovely bottle of Barolo that I got at this cute little place down in McDougal Street that I'd never been to before after playing quite a spirited game of Follow That Ass. Wait, have you ever played that? Yeah, I know. Follow That. Ass. Ass. You can say it, just sound it out. Ass. Yeah, I played it. By accident, or... I find that it takes me down streets I normally would never travel. And I've become quite adept at following people, well, ever since I created the game back in 1997, while attending a mock UN debate at the Jacob Javits Center. <sighs> oh, we beat the pants off of Boston, and that is not a euphemism. Or wait, is it? Is it a euphemism if it actually happened? I am not sure. <clears throat> well, sit, sit, tell me. Everything that's going on in your world. Um, well, I said I just came from Becky's. Yes, that poor girl. She's been live tweeting her intestinal issues all night. I mean, I was so thoroughly entranced that I ended up canceling a date I had. It's amazing she only has four followers. One of them is President Obama, and I just imagine him sitting in his office thinking, wow, technology is so amazing. Wait, was she babysitting while she was suffering through it all? I don't think so. Because she mentioned a little boy. I can't imagine the things that poor kid must have seen, smelled, and heard. Good lord. But she's okay? She is fine. Good. What a relief. And you, how are you? I'm fine, I guess. But ben, I rushed over here because you said it was an emergency. Is everything all right? No, not really. My, my dad died. Oh, God, Ben, I'm so sorry, when? Well, he hasn't died yet, but I've been practicing saying it because it's gonna happen soon, and I keep thinking it's gonna sound fake. So you believe me, right? Ben, what the hell? Sorry, sorry. It's just your parents only die once, and I just want to make the most of it. I so should have warned you. Sorry, just... We really haven't talked about him, have we? No, we haven't. And he's actually sick? Like, sick sick? Yeah. I mean, has been for a while, and I haven't told anyone about it. I had to tell Becky because she was here the night that he called, like, six months ago. He's been trying different medications. They cut out part of his lung. They didn't catch it in time. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ben. Thank you. I mean, he's pretty much on his way out. We've been talking and all. Just the other day, he, he confessed to me that he had a relationship with another guy for six months while he was in college. Wow. Like the deathbed confession stage. Yeah. Was it just creepy? I guess. But he didn't do the whole... Mm. Ben. Oh, Ben. Where are you, boy? What? What did you do to your face? Did you have the sex change? <laughs> oh! I told you adding <laughs> extra horn to make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it was strange. If you would have met the man in his prime, he literally would be the last person you would ever suspect of having relations with another man. Not that he was anti-gay or anything, he loved people, but he was just a man's man, you know? And oh, his new wife, Vanessa, she is a grade A cunt. I'm sorry. It's okay. <clears throat> it's okay. But if you had met her, you'd know exactly what I mean. Like she just kind of swooped in there when my mom died and they were all friends. Vanessa's very religious and has gotten him to renounce all of his old ways. So you can imagine when this relationship came up in conversation, the whole thing, the whole me going up there, literally, like I was summoned. Vanessa was there and she did the whole, hmm, I'll leave you two alone to talk thing. I mean, I just should have known. But ever since he's been sick, she's been treating him like he's a fucking pharaoh, fanning him with big six foot leaves. 
So he's telling me about this relationship, and I can't tell if it's because he's sick or angry or because she's warped his mind completely, but I was not talking to the man that raised me. He said that it was all a perversion, that he has felt guilty about it ever since it happened, and that he blames himself for me being gay. Jesus. Yeah, I tried to tell him that it's not hereditary, but he says no, that he somehow infected me, his words, with his past experience, and now I'm paying the price for his slight against God. Long story short, he disowned me. No, you're joking. Nope. The last act of a dying man to his only gay son. There's something so Shakespearean about it. Ben, you have to fight this. Ooh, or Spielbergy. No, you know what? I don't want to. I mean, it's not like he's got a lot of money. He's comfortable enough, I guess. And Vanessa will have a few more years before she has to find another moron to make feel bad about himself. And turn him against his family. Yeah, it's a skill. I mean, I don't even want the house anyway. Which she's been instructed to sell along with everything in it and donate it all to the church. You know what? She can fucking have it. It's not like there's a single shred of evidence that I ever lived there. Certainly nothing that reminds me of my mother. Well, except for the painting. Like one of yours? No, the painting that made me. Wait, the painting? Have I not told you any of this? No. How of all people have I not told you? Okay. Oh my God, it's, it's wonderful. Okay, so when my parents got married, they had their honeymoon in San Francisco during the summer of love. Uh, my mom wanted something to commemorate the trip by. <clears throat> so they ended up finding this hippie who was selling his paintings on the side of the road and well, bought one of them. This painting, it's the thing that made me want to become a painter. Like, every artistic bone in my body is born from that painting. And I'm gonna steal it. What? Yeah, I drew schematics of the whole entire house and I know exactly where it's being kept. Vanessa hated it, made him put it in the basement. <laughs> you drew schematics of the base. Couldn't you just ask your dad? Uh, no, I did, and I got stonewalled. And I'm telling you, Stacy, I did not go to Chelsea Piers, take a rock climbing class, do Iron Man prep, and run on a treadmill for three days in two weeks not to prepare myself for stealing back the thing that is rightfully mine. You took a rock climbing class? Yeah. It's in a basement. Yeah, I have to climb up and out of the basement, Stacy. Up. You know, it's got those cute little windows that you can escape out of in case, you know, the door locks behind me, or I'm trapped. And I can't breathe. What? It happens all the time to people with basements. 60 Minutes did a thing on it. I so thought we would be on the same page. Oh my God. Here it is. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Wait, this is an original Mike Polinsky. Huh, that's strange. I always thought that the signature said Sunshine McGee. No, 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 Ben. He is a very famous artist. He, Andy Warhol found him in San Francisco and brought him into his entourage. He called him the Pole. Oh God, I just got that. I always thought it was because of his name. Um, no, he's still alive too, he's like 90. MoMA just did a retrospective of his work. Ben, people are trying to find this. <laughs> what people? Like, the mob? No, collectors, Ben. Wait, this is worth a lot of money? Yeah, it is, but it, I mean, it's not a painting you just sell. We're talking retirement money here, Ben, no joke. Retirement money? We, this, Ben, we can't let that grade A. <gasps> Sound it out, sound it out, say it. God. Ben, we have to steal this painting. Yes, 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 yes. I so knew you were the right person to talk to about this. You've got wrong side of the tracks written all over, hidden somewhere in there. You know what, one of these days, I'm gonna get you to start swearing like the sailor I know you are. When are you gonna break in? The day of the funeral. Oh God, that's perfect. Yep, they don't want me to be there. So it's another big fuck you to the both of them. Awesome. Now, just, you know, 
toying with one other idea. Since I'm already gonna be there, why not burn the house down? What? I know, I know it's a little risky and I would probably be the only suspect, but I really wanna take this learning annex class on pyrotechnics. Ben, 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 honey. I gotta really in here. Okay, the painting, yes, absolutely, we gotta. But as much as I'd love for you to be able to piss on those ashes. You know, it kind of disturbs me that you've become the voice of reason here. <laughs> no, it doesn't. See how I kind of reverse the rules there for a second? You're right, as rain as ever. I promise I will only stick to the painting. There's just one more thing. You want to bulldoze the house now instead of burn it. <laughs> Wait. No, 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 I just, I don't have a driver's license and I need a getaway driver. Oh. And I would love to tell you about the when and where, but the when I'm not sure of. And the where is within driving distance and I just feel like the less you know, the better. I promise. Wherever I am, I'll be your getaway driver. Yes! <sighs> I am so relieved. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's talk about you. When do you start your new job? At the Met. Oh, you know, maybe when another position opens up. <laughs> Wait, what? You didn't get the job? You, the woman who told me everything there's to know about a painter from a goddamn photograph? Not everything. Do you know Polensky was actually homeless? You know what the problem ago? is? Is I just don't know enough goddamn people. Lisa and her husband, who shall not be named, they're rich. Well, kinda. Maybe they know somebody at the Met? I don't know, and why aren't you saying Kyle's name? Uh-uh, shh! Silence. How many people could have possibly been more perfect for that job? One too many, I guess. You know what? In a month, they're gonna realize they hired the wrong person. You think so? Absolutely. You've got dusty, backroom, Indiana Jones art chick written all over you. I just wish I was in a position to help. I'm just uh, not selling shit. And no one really cares about me. Well, not yet. Oh, Ben, I love your work. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's okay. Something's gonna happen, right? I just have to keep painting. Just, just work and work and, and keep meeting people until I finally come across that one person that sees something in me. At least that's how it happens in the art world. I'm not sure about other jobs in this city. You know, like desk jobs, real estate, accountants. I guess they're just too busy trying to save up enough money before they die of stress. Something's gonna happen for you too. Don't give up. Thanks, Ben. And if you're a dog walker for the rest of your life, when it comes time to sell the painting, I'll give you 10% just for helping me steal it, deal? Deal. Oh. Ooh, what a cutie. Hey, is there an app for straight people like Grindr? Yes, it's called Tinder. And no, I don't have an account. Mm-hmm. Well, do yourself a favor and get that HPV vaccine before you sign up. And maybe the morning after pill. You kind of have farm girl written all over you. Ooh. Okay, now it is time for me to offer you a choice. You can either stay here, witness something mm, primal, something majestic, though there's a slight chance it'll just end up a little pathetic. Oh boy. Or you can go to Lisa and what's his name's party. What party? You know what, I'm sure it was just an oversight and I'm positive that they maybe probably thought you were already coming. Wouldn't it be weird if I just show up? I mean, I'm not, I am not dressed for <laughs> They love you. Trust me. It's gonna be a lot of fun for me. And you. Holy cow, that was fast. All I wanna know is what are you wearing? Uh, jeans, dress shirt, and a vest. That is acceptable. You should have said not for long. Oh, I so should have. You are the best wing woman ever. All right, my darling. Mwah. Mwah. Go to Lisa's. I promise you won't regret it. <laughs> yeah. You have fun tonight. Don't do anything I 
Yeah, never mind. I don't know why people say that. Yeah. Hi, this is Lisa. I'm tied up at the moment, but leave me a message and I'll get back to you. Hey, it's Stacy. You must not have heard your phone because you're having such a great time at your party. But I'm on my way to hang out, um, so I'll see you soon. I'm gonna try Kyle. Okay, bye. Hi, this is Kyle, and I'm tied up. Don't say what I said. I'm tied up at the moment. Oh, shit, just leave me a message. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's Ellie. Leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, hey, where are you? Dude, I've had the weirdest day and I really need your help. I'm heading to Lisa's party. And you're at Lisa's party, of course you are. Did everyone forget to invite me? All right, see you soon, bye. I was just coming to see you. Uh, hello, Principal Glassman. He said that, did he? Wow. Is this your home number? He's there? Oh, God damn it. Oh, it's not that I'm not interested. I just, am um, still thinking about it. It is, it's a great opportunity and thank you again for offering it to me. I just don't know the first thing about teaching kids arts and crafts. I'm an art history. Uh, well, I appreciate the vote of confidence. Yeah, I realize you have a short amount of time to fill the position. I just... Okay, I understand. Um, I appreciate your patience, uh, Mr. Glossman, and I'll be in touch with you next week. No. <sighs> you tell him. I'll talk to him later. Okay, thank you. Good night. Damn it, Dad. said you were throwing a party, said I should Ben. come by. This is awkward. Ellie's not in there, is she? N no, no. Um, honey, th it's a couple's party, so oh. we just, oh god. Oh. All right, here, just, I'm gonna oh. kill him. Who is it? Stacy, what are you, don't, why are you talking in the hallway? Oh, we're just coming just in. Leaving. Fantastic, and you brought more wine, which is perfect because some of us were just about to regain the ability to stand erect, upright, to stand up straight. 
Do you want some ecstasy? Kyle? No, I mean, sorry. Just forget I asked. Unless you want some. Everyone, this is our friend Stacy. Stacy, this is Mindy, Paul, Leslie, Adam, Mark, and Jennifer. Hi. Here you go, honey. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. What are you doing? Oh, I save the corks from bottles of wine I drink from, and I write down everyone's name. Uh, it's kind of like a memory. I'm working on a collage. My name is spelled with an I-E at the end. Thank you. Um, I tried calling you. Oh yeah, it's a rule. Every so, Stacy, how are you? I'm fine. And what's new? Uh, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to stay in the city or if I'm going to move back home. What? Oh, oh shit. Do tell. No, you know what? <laughs> this is your little something. I don't want to intrude. You're already intruding. I mean that in the nicest way possible. Do tell us what's troubling you. She already said she doesn't know she wants to stay in the city. And they said nothing good would come out of rehab. I know exactly how you feel. You were in rehab? I was, no, no. Well, yeah, but not that. I was going to leave the city and then I met this amazing guy and he just made me feel like it was my home again. You were gonna leave the city before you met me? You never told me that. Oh, no, no, different guy, guy. It was like two, no, three guys before you. Aww. Just think, if it wasn't for them, I never would have met you, Pookie. Or the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother moved to the city for six months, couldn't hack it, left for greener pastures. Brad's a farmer now? No, it's, a, it's an expression, honey. I don't get it. We left the city for a little while. Oh, yeah, uh, we um, went to Massachusetts after she got pregnant. We were those people that thought that raising a kid in the city was like uh, keeping a dog in your apartment. So cruel. It just didn't seem fair to the, well, thing, mm -hmm. dog, child. <laughs> I think we lasted five months. Then we figured what the hell, we'll deal with the kids' issues as they come up. Medicine therapy. It's kind of like animals born in captivity. Like, they're still happy. I read a statistic that 75% of kids are diagnosed with ADD in the womb. They say it's the kicking. Maybe you should get your tubes tied then, bitch. Maybe my tubes are tied. They're not, but I have an IUD in my vagina. Uh, IUD? <laughs> what? We're thinking we might just have to hire two nannies. Two hot nannies, am I right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> we already uh, sacrificed so much for the uh, the little bastard we figured, you know, we decided we'd rather be happier in the city. There is nothing wrong with weighing your options, Stace. When do you have to decide? By Wednesday. Oh, holy oh. fuck. What's today? My lease is up and I... Uh, I didn't get the Met job. Oh God, honey. Oh, not again. Shit. I don't know anyone with the Met. The Met? The Metropolitan Opera? You dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you had that one chick, Marnie. She was an opera singer. You brought Marnie here? She was like two or three women ago, and no, she was just a little fat. She wasn't actually a singer. <laughs> oh. You think Marnie's fat? What do you mean, not again? <laughs> what? Oh, um, Stacy just hasn't had the best luck with jobs is all. What happened? Well, I moved here from Wisconsin <laughs> for a job three years ago, and when I got here, I found out they'd given it to somebody else. And this time was for an even better job, and I got through three rounds of interviews. I really thought I nailed it. Oh, that same thing happened to Mark. Different guy, honey. Oh, shit. Well, it's not the end of the world. People leave, they come back. The city's not going anywhere. Yeah, I just don't think I can swing that many moves and get a job and leave with my cat and come back and all that. I mean, it's expensive just getting here three years ago. I mean, going back and forth. It's not that expensive. What do you do for a living? I'm a dog walker. I know. What? I'm a dog walker. Like, for a charity? And a good dog walker, too. You know, I saw her once with seven dogs. 
I thought she was practicing with the sled team for the Olympics. <laughs> and look at how fantastic she looks. Imagine getting all the exercise you would ever need and making money under the table. I'd do it. No, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I love that you're doing it, honey. What's the material on this couch? I think it's, um... It feels like something small children made. I can feel all the fibers, like tiny fingers stitch them together. It's leather. Les, come over here and put your face on this. Oh, God, yes. Tiny fingers. Stacy, I've got a question for you. What do you hate about the city? Ooh, good question. I'm not sure. I don't hate much, I don't think. That's not why I'd be leaving. There's got to be something. I hate that there's a Starbucks on every corner. But you love their coffee. That's not the point. I hate all the coffee shops that aren't Starbucks. I hate the real estate prices. Lisa and I were thinking of buying another place, but the cost of some of these apartments, it's just astronomical. We looked in Brooklyn, and it's almost as expensive as the city. That's right. I heard it's called gentification. Uh, with an R. Rentification? Now you're just making up words. Having a car in the city is just ridiculous. We had to hire a driver. Did she say her vagina was an IED? Yeah. I hate the horses in Central Park. <laughs> mm. Oh, oh the the smell the in the summertime. That's what we had to get a I don't know. I don't know. I hate tourists. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, like full-on hate. They're the worst. I just, I don't understand why they come to this city and they act like they're in their living room. I mean, I've traveled and I don't act like that. I hate Times Square. Mm. And 34th Street. And you know what, that strip between the two? Oh, I feel an utter revulsion for the entire area. People work there. I mean, how do they do that? It would drive me insane. Yeah. You know what? I hate pregnant women, too. Not, like, pregnant women who are trying to get a seat on the subway. No, I hate those entitled women who think that the child in their bellies is the second coming, and they treat their pregnancies like they invented it. That was me. It's why we named our son Jesus. Kid's gonna be an asshole. And don't get me started on strollers. They just, they keep getting wider, and they come at you in packs. Oh, and I hate when groups of people are walk three, four across in a row on the sidewalk, and the idea that whatever moron a conversation they're having is more important than general consideration and spatial awareness of the other people sharing the five feet of sidewalk. Ah, uh, I hate bicyclists. Mm. Not the ones in the bike lane or the ones observing traffic laws. I hate the delivery guys who are gonna lose their jobs if they're not fast enough or the messengers who blow through red lights and get mad when pedestrians clearly have the right of way. Oh, amen! I hate taxi drivers who don't know how to get where they're going, even though they have a GPS app on their phone. I hate how I keep having to pay more for crappy subway service. Fucking MTA. I hate when you order takeout food and it comes to you wrong. You need to call and send it back, but I mean, how do you have the courage to do that? Who knows what's gonna come back with? Sperm. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, and I hate the inconsiderate people who don't pick up after their dogs poop, and I see it all the time. I fucking hate that. I hate the cat calls and the morons who say inappropriate comments to me no matter what I'm wearing. And I hate how New Yorkers treat each other. Can she stay in? That was the single most perfect answer to that question I have ever heard. I am so sorry. I don't know why I just said sorry? all that. Sorry? Are you kidding me? Somebody should write that down on a card and sell it and people can keep it in their wallets and they can pull it out and they can read it when they're really angry. He said pull it out. <laughs> I just, I, I feel your frustration, Stacy. I feel it. Here. Yeah. With a laundry list like that, You'd think your decision would be easy. 
anything now. Not that I don't agree with you. Do you love anything about this city, Lisa? Yeah, honey. Is there anything you love about the... Uh... <laughs> I do. Problem is, they're some of the same things. Not Taurus. Oh, God, no. <laughs> but I love the theater district. I mean, it's romantic and wonderful. It feels like the heart of the city. I love being able to walk everywhere and how the city changes from block to block. The architecture, the people. I love that there is a 24-hour deli down the block from here and that any time, night or day, I can get any kind of food I want delivered at the touch of a button. Is that true? Yeah. We have a chef. But the one thing about this city that restores my faith in humanity is that every once in a while, the stars will align and everyone I run into is understanding and doesn't try to turn my day into shit. It's rare and I take those days for granted but I know they happen. You know, it's so easy to get angry about the people in this city. And I understand why, I really do. It just makes me cherish the stranger who is selfless and kind. I'm sorry, I can't wait any longer. <laughs> Oh my god! Thank you for coming! Just let me slip in. Yeah. Oh yes! Get me that, please. Yes! This is your city! Alright, come on, come on. You do not want to be a part of this, I promise you. You... You're swingers? How did you just figure that out? Oh, God. You poor corn-fed transplant. Wisconsin is corn, right? Cheese, mostly. Cheese. Cheese fed. Was it too much for your virgin eyes? My eyes aren't virgins. Ew. No, ew. Wait, I don't even know what that means. Swingers. It's like they were turning into Romans in there. Oh, it's actually much less complicated than that. We're bored. And this is, well, this is mostly his idea. We hate each other, but we love each other at the same time. I think that happens in any long-term relationship. We were just trying to spice things up at the beginning and the end. You know, I honestly thought getting fucked on the circle line was gonna help solve our problems. And then one day, he invites Jennifer and Mark over, and somewhere between dinner and dessert, I'm getting double teamed by God. Oh, okay, I, I get it. Okay, yeah, it's weird. I don't know, but... I get to have fun once a month. Once a month? I know, it's bad. But none of them have any diseases and... They... God! Oh. You think you're confused. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lisa. God, don't be sorry. I'm sorry. This was supposed to be a secret. Oh, but Ben knows. Yeah, that's true. Look. I'm miserable. I, I feel pathetic. It's also fun, which I'm sure sounds strange. Okay, you're having sex with a bunch of attractive people. It's not that strange. <laughs> you're okay with Kyle being with all those women? Oh, God. He doesn't really have sex with any of them. Oh. Yeah. Christ, I really am pathetic. No! Hey, you're trying to make it work. That's the farthest thing from pathetic. <laughs> I mean, Catholics would love you for trying. You're kind to say. Listen, I'm glad you came here and saw this and talked. Oh God, honestly, you are so much stronger than you think you are. Whatever you choose, I'm sure it's the right decision. I would have thrown you to the wolves tonight, but. Oh, no, 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 no. No, thank you. I don't, I'm not, I, I'm with, no. I, oh, but wait a minute. Has Ben been here? Uh, on occasion. And he and Kyle? Once or twice. Oh, oh, he hates that Kyle is married to me. Thinks I'm his beard. Maybe I am, but fuck him. I saw him first. All right, just go, go. If I don't get in there, I'll be left 
watching and that is no fun. Well, it actually is kind of fun. <laughs> See, what happens is you get tagged in. Good night. Good night. Good night. I love you. <laughs> He keeps gaining weight. Oh, I have been trying to call you all night. A likely story. No, I promise. After the night I had, I just got back from Lisa's. Wow, and you can still walk? God, she knew about them too? It's New York's worst kept secret. Lisa springs it on her friends when she feels her life is just so dull and people hate her. And then she just loves basking in their reactions. Wait, have you gone? No. She's invited me as like an observer with benefits, but I think I could only handle being gangbanged under very specific circumstances. Like if I was stuck in a subway car in China. You are coming over. Uh, duh. You want something to drink? Sure. What do you want? Uh, I've been drinking red all night. Time to switch it up. Oh, God. <laughs> you working tomorrow? Yeah, it's 7 a.m. Oh, too bad for you. And no cork. Sigh. I hate your apartment. Yeah, it's the worst. Ice, no ice? Uh, no ice. How'd you find this place? It was my ex's uncle's business partners, I think. I honestly can't remember, but it's rent stabilized, and so whatever shit I have going on in my life, I've got that. You've got that. I may not have it for long, mind you. You're not looking for an apartment, are you? I'd love to keep this in the family. <laughs> no, and I couldn't afford it. Too bad. There's a gym and laundry. What and do you mean you might lose it? I got fired. What? I got fired. What? When? On Tuesday. Who I'm fires sorry, people on a Tuesday? You. And I'm sorry I didn't call you back. I was pissed off and depressed and I didn't want to talk about it. I'm hoping it's going to be temporary and... What happened? They said it was downsizing. But I was their only graphic designer. They just went and hired some college kid to do the job I was doing at half the salary. I think that's still downsizing. downsizing. Yeah. Yeah. It still hurt. I wasn't working for Google, you know? A 10-person firm should be able to get rid of someone else who isn't working 10 or 12-hour days and being treated like a trained monkey. You wanna know what a typical day of mine was like? Sure. Okay, ready? You're me. Look straight ahead. Uh, okay, Ellie, I like what you did here, but I'd really like it if you'd move this over here, and this, put this here. This, I'd like this on the other page, and then move this over. You know what? Let's start over. For hours on end. The guy had zero design sense. You know, don't listen to the person with 15 years of experience. But he said it was his money, so... It's a wonder to me, all the people with jobs they don't deserve. No shit, but that's everywhere. It's a fuck time to not have a steady job. I got an interview straight away at an advertising agency. The guy who interviewed me said he got over 300 resumes. Jesus! Yeah. Feels like there are more graphic designers in this city than there are doctors or lawyers. I don't know. Something will come up. Right? I don't know. You don't know? I... Wow. That... <laughs> when someone asks you about the not-so-distant future, you're supposed to say, chin up, it'll work itself out, or it's just temporary, or of course you're not too old to have children. My mom called earlier. This is the shit I'm dealing with. Ellie, when I was your age, I had your brother, your sister, you, a mortgage, and a drinking problem. And I think your father's having an affair. Jesus, people about to kill themselves say, I don't know. Shit, something happened. I didn't get the Met job. Fuck, what? How do you not get that job? Oh, honey, I'm sorry. It's not just not getting the job. My lease is up and I don't have another year of dog walking in me in the hopes that there maybe might be something better on the horizon. There's a job waiting for me back home. 
and the thought of it's killing me, but it's stable and it pays well. And I'd only have to live with my folks until I found my own place, but it really honestly feels like it would be torture. You know, I went out tonight to see Becky to talk about it and I ended up going on this world tour of friends apartments. So then I asked everyone what they thought I should do, but I didn't tell them about the job because, well, because I didn't want it to be my best option. I know they would have just said, take the job and come back to the city when you can. And I didn't want to hear that either. So basically it was just a giant waste of time. I mean, poor Becky's dying of dysentery. <laughs> yeah, she was live tweeting the whole thing to Obama. She hashtagged send the Marines. Ben is there dealing with his father's bitch of a wife. Lisa has to agree to swingers parties just to have a working relationship. You lost your job. And my problem after tonight, it just doesn't seem that important. Well, I gotta tell you, all those problems they're having and the problem you're having, they all have equal importance to me. No, they don't. Hey, I care about those people. I love them. I love you too. And if you don't think that the idea of my best friend leaving isn't a major fucking concern to me, well, that makes you a bitch. It does, doesn't it? I would hate it if you left. I really would. I wish there was something I could do. Is there? No. I'm just not getting the breaks I thought I'd be getting. I'm, doors aren't opening. I'm not meeting the right people. Or if Becky's right, I'm not sleeping with them. <laughs> Becky. She's one of a kind, let me tell you. I just thought after all this time I'd have something in the field I want to work in. Well, you are not alone. A lot of my friends aren't anywhere near where they'd hoped they'd be. Hell, even some of the ones who are doing what they want. Can you imagine having to pretend to be grateful for a job that makes you miserable? In this economy and under that much pressure, you go and tell them it's no way to live. On the wrong day, they'll just kill themselves. I don't... Are you trying to tell me I'm overreacting? Did I say that? I'm honestly trying to figure that out. I would never say that. Okay. Okay? You believe me? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I just... I don't know what the answer is. Really. When you hear people talk about their friends who left and they say, yeah, they just couldn't hack it in the city. And I think that is so unfair because people leave for so many reasons. But then I, sometimes all this is just so hard, you know? And I come home at night and I'm so exhausted. And I just want to disappear. And I hate my job. I say that I like it, but I hate it. And I hate my apartment and I hate how much I have to pay in rent and I hate that I have to call home every two months and ask for a loan. My dad asked me how I'm doing and I lie and say that everything's fine. And I know I'm not a failure, but I sure do feel like one. And then some nights I just want to order takeout and eat ice cream and I do that. <laughs> and then other nights I go to get a bottle of wine and it's the same bottle of wine I get every Thursday and the guy behind the counter is like, hey, it must be Thursday, like it's some kind of joke. I don't get it, it is Thursday. Well, I know. There's just so much I love about being here. But I don't know if I can keep it up. You know, I don't subscribe to the whole the city is a rough place and it's not for everyone line. It's just like saying life isn't fair. I don't think life gives a flying fuck about what's fair and what isn't. You wanna know what isn't fair? People. I hate the fact that so much of what we want out of life is based on how we're treated by other people. You don't have to have the perfect job to be happy. All the people who work the shit jobs, their real lives are the hours they spend away from all the bullshit. And that is where so much of what we love happens. Imagine all the amazing things that have happened in this world during someone's time away from work. And you wanna know what the kicker is? What? The majority of them don't live in New York City. This place isn't the greatest place on earth for everyone. Hell, it isn't that for some people who live here. The city is just an idea. Put enough people together and under the right circumstances, anything is possible. I don't want to leave that. I fucking love it here and I am going to do whatever I have to to stay. Whether that means getting some shit job or, God forbid, get a roommate. So listen, 
Before you decide whether you're gonna leave town or not, I think you really need to be honest with yourself and figure out why you wanna live in this city. You know, I haven't said anything because I just wanted to be supportive. And I hope you know I love you and I hate to say this, but it's been three years. There are other museums besides the Met. I mean, there's gotta be like 20 of them in the city. Mm, it's over 50. Over <laughs> 50? Oh, honey. <sighs> I hate you. I know. I'm sorry. You know, at least I hope you know, that if you do decide to leave, I'll respect your decision. If you get to that point where you feel it's your only option, then it must have been a fucking bitch to make that choice, and I would never give you a hard time about it. Thanks. And who knows? You might leave and love it. Maybe. What's the job? Back home. Teaching art to high school. What? Teaching art to high school kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, laugh it out. I'm sorry. I think you'd make a great teacher. I just got this picture in my head of you telling a bunch of Wisconsin goth kids not to eat paste. <laughs> They don't, high school kids don't eat paste, do they? <laughs> I'm sure they think it'll get them high. No, <laughs> stop it. You could snort it. Yeah, you could like, you know, get into the paint glue. a little syringe. They you sniff glue? Oh. Yeah, like sniff Elmer's glue, that would like spring. No. Hey. So you've had all night to think about it. What do you think we should do? Yeah, me too.
Oh my God. All right, time to go. Bye, Dad. Oh, I never thought I would see a new Polensky painting in person. Yeah, yeah, you've seen it. Now, say it. Ben, come on. You promised. <sighs> if they get back here and they see us, we're. Say it! Ben, I have to get home. Okay, Winter's been holding his bladder for six hours, at least I hope he has. And six hours is not within driving distance, by well, the way. Technically, anything is within driving distance. And I have a job interview in the morning. With who? The Guggenheim. Hmm. Never heard of him. Ha ha. Say it, and we can go. Don't they? Goodbye, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.